Welcome back to Misunderstood. I'm your host, Rachel Yucatel. Today we have David Yontif from Behind the Velvet Rope. Again, normally we don't do shows like this, but I wanted to do what's going on, hot topics, and the only person that I could possibly think of doing this with is Mr. Yontef right here. So thank you for joining me again. We had such a fun time last uh, episode. We got so many comments and likes from it. So we're a pretty good team. I mean, I could pr- give you all the things I'm misunderstood about one day I'm here if you want. You know, I mean, I fit in the unmisunderstood. But yes, thank you yeah. for the hot topics. Thank you for inviting. What an honor to be in. Am I your first return guest? You are. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, before we get started, I yeah. have to ask you a question. Really? Okay. This is... Okay, so the thing is, I don't know if you know this, but I'm looking at your what you're wearing. First of all, I love what, what pants are these? They're oh, so yeah, these are Alvin Valley. He's They're known gorgeous. as the king of pants. I wear his pants almost every time I shoot different ones, obviously. Pink. But I love how hot the colors are. I have a yellow, I have a pink, I have a blue, I have a black. And he makes pants better than anyone else. So anyone that needs a good pair of pants, go to Alvin Valley. He has a store in Palm Beach. I think he's going to be in the Hamptons this summer. So, and he makes them made to order. So they are fit, fitting for your body. Amazing. Come and find me in the Hamptons. And by the way, I've got a lot of listeners for my own podcast, Behind the Velvet Rope. So if he wants to do a custom pair, I'll give him a free shout out. Okay, I'll let him know. <laughs> um, but this is, the, I just noticed the pants are I gorgeous. I pay for mine. So oh, maybe really? I should be asking for a, a mean, deal now that I gave him the shout out. <laughs> but here's the deal. So I notice your jewelry. I notice your necklace. I see this. There's a star, but I see a lightning bolt. Uh-huh. Do you know what a lightning bolt is? No. Oh, you don't know this. No. That is, it's because you Does don't it watch. Does mean I'm a swinger? It means <laughs> that I think you've, did you ever have an affair with Tom Sandoval? Are you kidding? The lightning He's bolt. He's not my type. Let's just start there. Okay. First of all, yeah. I went to see Tom Sandoval and the most extras in concert last week. Uh, this week, did you see the body? I did see the body. body. It is a revenge body, but he's totally not my type. I actually don't get it. I don't get why everyone's so up in arms, especially over him. I mean, that it to me is just an odd person to be like so obsessed with either hating or loving. He kind of seems like in the middle for me, but he does have a good body. But he's one of the worst singers I've ever heard. Why does he have a band? Okay, first of all, so but the thing is him and Raquel, Mm -hmm. when they were having the seven month affair, Mm -hmm. they gave each other lightning bolt necklaces and nobody noticed it wow. but then it's like he has one and she has one that was like their secret code come on so i swear to god oh so so me wearing a lightning he, bolt um, you think i've had an affair with tom yes. sandoval are you sh- definitely he has not. one and you have one so i need to know if you had an affair <laughs> no. has rachel you could tell had an affair with tom <laughs> sandoval Okay, well, no, I definitely would stay far away from that one. He's not your type for lots of reasons. He's my type. Is he? Why is that? I mean, I just like a body. Mm. I'm really, there's nothing, there's nothing here. There's no substance to me. I like the substance. You do? Yes, I do. I'm really into that. So what was it like seeing him in concert? Okay, can, this is a real true story. I, yeah. I'm doing a whole show, and whole episode on my podcast about this. I brought three friends. One of them does not watch Bravo. First of all, when I say bring, I mean like they had to buy tickets, but it, they were $25. Mm-hmm. One of them does not watch Bravo. The other two do. The other two are like, we cannot believe we're going. But it was like a night out. I'm like, you'll come with me. We'll have drinks. We'll have fun. Mm-hmm. The, the whole day, this is miserable. I can't believe if anyone sees us there, we're so embarrassed. We get there. <laughs> ABC News is outside. They're like, if that camera points at near my direction one more time, I this is I'm hyperventilating. I actually ended up talking to it because they recognize me and they're like, isn't aren't you in like the pod? This is what you do, a Bravo podcast. I'm like, all right, I'll speak to you as long as you could say Bravo, you know, behind. Who the were the kind Bravo. of people that were there? Was it, it packed? It was okay. Well, I mean, they show this thing online, Long Island. No one's there. It was busier than I would have thought based mm-hmm. on all this hype. It's it's cover band. So they sing like Rosanna. They sing like Journey. They sing so, things. Oh, songs I love those. Songs. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Aha. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It really covers 80s, 90s, and like early 2000s. They did Outcast. Yes. What? So then he's there, and then the shirt eventually comes off. So I was like, when we left, I figured, no, no, no. We all walk outside. M- my two friends, t- the two that watch, they're like, is Independently, they haven't talked about this. They're both madly in love with Tom Sandoval. No way. Cannot, I, we've been texting all week. Probably the best concert of our life. I mean, we're obviously <laughs> making a little bit of a joke out of it. It's not their <laughs> best concert, but they're like, should we go to the DC show? Where else wow. is he playing? It's changed their lives. Wow. So, but that little clip I saw of him singing. 
Was that just a bad clip? Is he a good cover artist? I thought he was a good singer. I think I sent you Rosanna by Toto. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, Aha, take I will go on to me. the next one with you. Yes. How about that? Did you, you actually to. meet him? Did you say hello? He, uh, I have a picture. I have put multiple pictures with him. Yes. Did you ask him any before, questions? It, before the show, we, uh, some of us in the industry were able mm-hmm. to go back, but he doesn't know at what you're in the industry. And I just like, should I mention like my whole point of being here is an actual Bravo podcast, which I did because I felt good vibe. Okay. Then he was like kind of taking it back. I'm like, this is all off the record. Don't worry. Um, I mean, of course it Except isn't. Except for now we're talking about it. <laughs> Except yeah. for now. You know, listen, I asked a lot about it. I didn't say how's Raquel because she really, she really is in a mental facility. Now, no one has seen her, so we don't know that for yeah. sure. What do you mean by a mental facility? Well, that's where it gets blo- – some people are – look, at she's keeping a low profile. We mm-hmm. don't know where she is. Mm-hmm. He says she's at a true mental facility. No visitors, no phone, no contact with the outside world. Why would she spa. need to be at a mental facility? I think, well, unlike you, who the whole world came for <laughs> after you had relations with a certain someone, mm-hmm. and you understand, and if you're not – you don't know who you are inside and the whole world hates you and is saying things. And imagine that. Would you be okay if all that happened now with Instagram and social? Well, you know, it's a good question because it happened to me exactly how it's happening to her, yeah. right? People just absolutely hate her and she's getting a lot of negative comments. And to, for her to turn on her phone and see that in social media or even just to hear how people are writing about her, um, it's really, really hard. I mean, no matter what things you do in your life, maybe mistakes, maybe things you don't regret, but it sounds to me like she didn't, they didn't regret what happened between them, but people are not obviously liking her decisions, right? It is so hard when people are so judgmental and awful and and almost violent towards you. I mean, we saw the clips of the um, reunion and you see just in those clips the anger and people standing up and yelling at her and calling her names and being so awful. Um, and to Tom, too. I mean, I feel like in my situation, the man didn't get a lot of flack. Uh, uh-uh. It took this long for people to to start to maybe – think the man that I was involved with has some issues and it wasn't just the women. Well, there's been some new developments yeah, in that area too, but, speaking um, of hot topics. But but I will say um, if I had the opportunity to go away and get some help for whatever I was dealing with, with my self-esteem, um, I probably would have taken it. How I took it was I went on celebrity rehab. That was a real moment for me, a real three weeks where I became a recluse. I couldn't leave my house. I was super depressed. I lost everybody in my life. And I was with Dr. Drew and eight or seven other people for three weeks and dealt with um, the feelings, not that situation, but I dealt with what that's like to, um, you know, be so hated and why I was so hated. But it, it stemmed way further back in my life. So I dealt with my life issues. So if she's doing that, I totally get it. And, and more recently, like in 2000, I checked myself into the meadows, um, to deal with my post traumatic stress disorder from September 11th, from being in a huge, scandal that people like we're talking about hated me um and still want to talk about to this day and still want to talk about and shame me for to this day it's really hard to take on um my own guilt um but everyone else's anger about how it triggers them that's a lot to handle so i think i if she is in a mental facility I, i wouldn't call it a mental facility i would think it's some sort of a rehab um even though you know, you don't have to be an alcoholic or a drug user to go into rehab. Um, if she's taking time for herself, that's great. Um, but the anger that has, you know, that has come out of the scandal, I, I really don't understand. That entire cast was based on cheating and not being um, loyal, kind of. And so I, I still don't get the level, level of anger that comes from these former cheaters. Do you? No. I, I mean, listen, I cover this so many t- – as you know, Behind the Velvet Rope is a three-day-a-week mm. interview podcast, and the other two days, we do hot topics like this, so mm. five days a week. A scandal is like every – it's always – it's one of my hot topics just because people want – I don't understand it at all. Right. You know, like Why I – Why haven't people moved on to a different Well, scenario? I'm hoping – 
I am hoping now, mm-hmm. oh, look, I don't wish harm upon anyone, but no. now that Kim and Croy are getting divorced, right. a lo- my, my DMs are like, when are you going to talk about this next week? We're finally talking about mm-hmm. it. I'm like, this, t- look, at, this doesn't even shock me either, but this shocks me more, and I'm more invested in a woman that came on smoking cigarettes, cursing, w- was with Big Papa, now is with Croy, like, and has found what seemed to be love. There was a whole spinoff show, has four kids with this man, has two kids of her own. Everyone knows. This, to me, is way more, and now has, like, all these money problems. This well, is, this like, is re- this know, is a real yes, scenario. I yes. mean, th- what happened with them was a, w- with um, – Tom Sandoval and his two women was obviously a real scenario, but like uh, Kim and Croy to me, this is like a marriage falling apart and people were really invested in what they portrayed. So what is your opinion on the divorce um, news with Kim Kim and Croy? I mean, honestly, I didn't believe it. It was I well no I I believed it was a divorce but I really thought it was like a legal play for financial reasons because interesting you know they each owe about a million dollars with which I Lala has spoken out against them as has Bethany and I agree with both they both have something to say and I'm like I agree with both of you on this and meaning what what do you well Lala has come out and said you know this really kind of puts the nail in my coffin of like why have a partner I've been saying that for years why I'm available believed- people can slip into my DMs but. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Meaning she thought they were the end-all, be-all of reality TV marriages? Well, I think her own situation, Scandival, Mm. and now Kim and Croy. You know, listen, I feel it's – it's. I have a jaded view of relationships. I I think I have an adult view of relationships. Mm. So she's just like, what's the point? I'm I'm thrilled – not bitter. I'm thrilled with my own life. I'm my best partner and I love my life. Mm. I kind of agree with all that. And then Bethany, yeah, okay. you would like to say well, something? Well, I just want to say that that <laughs> You're going to say that's keep... bullshit. You're hiding something. No, You're all really not, unhappy. Not at all. You need therapy. You have to get to the root of your issues. No, I was going to say people get divorced all the time. They had a long run totally. for them. How long were they married? I think 11 years. Okay, so they had a long run and – People fall out of love. People, when they have totally. financial problems, that causes a lot of tension, a lot of anger, a lot of blame. We don't know what the actual reasoning is for their divorce, but it could have been coming for a lot of years. She did a lot of spending. She kind of changed him a little bit, you know, in the years that you see Croy develop or whatever. And her kids have completely morphed and changed. And maybe they just... You know, there's obviously issues that we don't know. We can only speculate, but people get divorced all the time. I don't know why that puts the coffin in somebody not believing in relationships. That seems a little odd to me. But. I just already, I, for me, it didn't put the nail in anything. I just yeah. already felt this way. Like, okay, welcome to it. I, ag- I mean, I agree. I'm cynical about relationships for my own reasons, but not because people in reality TV don't work. And by the way, now it's rumored, or this is breaking, I don't know, like in 24 hours, might find out something else, but a rumor is that she's also been seeing this. Older gentlemen, lots of money. So, well, that would be, um, you know, par for the course for her, right? That's why now I'm like, oh, like it went from like what happened to like, is Kim just, I mean, trash? Like, is she just going from one to the next to the next mm. just for money? I guess that doesn't make you trash. I guess that's harsh. I should, I should take that back, Kim Solsiak. <laughs> but it just, ugh, I don't know. Like, we met her that way with Big Papa. And listen, I understand it. I'm not judging because I really am not. I don't judge anyone. Mm-hmm. It's just more like I don't know what – I don't know why that's disappointing to me if yeah. that's why. It's more like – I don't know. I guess well, like th- we might, thought that you might not really be the cause. That, that might I'm, be who I'm she's all about now. dating wealthy and like I am, I am <laughs> no one to judge anyone. I'm just like – I thought maybe she was so in love with Croy. Yeah. Well, he's know. hot. He's Is super he? hot. I think he's hot. You know what I mean? I'd rather have Tom Sandoval. Oh, God. Back on that one again. Okay. I'd rather have Tom Sandoval. So, I mean, I guess – and then Bethany went on a rant of, which I agree. It, listen, I love material things. Mm. I mean, I'm all about spend it, have multiple cars, have t- – I mean, I'm all about conspicuous consumption. Let's spend like it's the 80s, guys. Mm. Not if you don't have it. Yeah. So Bethany went on a rant, like, pay your fucking bills, and this is what's wrong with America and what's mm-hmm. wrong with the world is that people just – I don't understand that. You yeah. go out, you spend $4,000 on your credit card, the bill comes, you can only pay 300 Well, guess what? That was a bad month. You should never now spend another penny on that credit card till that thing is – I mean, I don't, I don't understand that type of living. That's just me. I agree that that is an American trait, and that is something that is really – 
difficult to see people get into that scenario. It's not just a reality TV thing, though. No. So many people try to live above their means. So many people are living a smoke and mirrors life. Well, probably because of things like reality TV and because everything is about who you are, what you look like, what your, you know, what car you drive, where you live. I mean, people find their um, self-worth in those things. But that doesn't that doesn't, that's a Band-Aid. So you buy the Bentley, the Band-Aid is there. You're thrilled for three weeks. You still have to live with the fact with that yourself. you are, right, insecure and you haven't worked on yourself. Right. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. I personally have been through a lot of trying times in my life, trauma, grief, for example, I think those are universal themes that people can really understand. I lost my fiance, Andy, in 9-11, and the pain was unbearable. Since then, I've gone through other traumas that didn't feel as big, but I still needed to talk to somebody. And having somebody I didn't know that well, but was really good at listening, felt like the right thing to do. And it was so helpful to me. I love that I can have someone to talk to that isn't one of my close friends that I can just confide in and feel like it's between us. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. I signed up for this just the other day. I've already been matched to the most perfect therapist for me. I'm excited because I've already touched base with them and I have my first appointment in a couple of days. So I will let you guys know how that goes, but I'm super excited to try this service. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash understood today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash understood. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash understood and get on your way to being your best self. Okay, guys, I'm so excited to tell you about our new sponsor, Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Literally, the day I started using Rocket Money, just a few days ago, they were able to find hundreds of dollars in monthly subscriptions that I did not even know I had. Literally hundreds. I was absolutely shocked and amazed by this. Every month, I'm like, where's all my extra money going? Now I know. Rocket Money showed me that I had been paying for a monthly credit monitoring system that I did not know about and hadn't been taking advantage of. It also broke down those little transactions that are frequent but seem innocent, such as those daily trips to Starbucks, which can quickly add up to hundreds of dollars. Between my daughter, Y and I, we've been single-handedly keeping Starbucks in business, and I will definitely have to be cutting back on those coffee trips. I was so excited about Rocket Money that I even told my producer, Kelly, all about it, and now she's a member as well. She has already found a ton of ways to save money she didn't even know she was spending. She's a single mother, and so am I. So taking control of where our money is going each month is so important. Over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, and chances are you are one of them. Like that Stars app just to watch one show or the free gaming trial you never actually used. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find subscriptions for you, and for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place, automatically categorizes your expenses, so you can quickly and easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. I'm not kidding you guys, when I got a trial for this, and started. I was blown away. I love this app. I hope you try it because you are going to be obsessed and you are going to be happy that you did. Stop throwing away your money. Cancel unwanted subscriptions. Manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash understood. That's rocketmoney.com slash understood. Rocketmoney.com slash understood. Well, and and always it ends up exploding, imploding later because um, yes. you can't keep it going. And, you know, if you're using those those uh, things, right, to get a, a man, to get a woman, whatever it is, um, 
people will eventually see who you are on the inside. So you, all those things won't cover it up. I think right. that that's, you know, the end result. And you so end up- So why don't people, you and I are sitting here and realize this, well, like, if you can afford it, by all means, buy a new Louis Vuitton bag every week. Oh, who's guilty <laughs> of that? I love my Louis. Yeah. I am calling for an intervention a little bit, but I'm not doing it for the wrong reasons. I'm doing it because I can afford it and I like it. But you do get like a new bag every week. Yes, but I'm not. Your podcast do- must be doing really well. <laughs> but listen, okay, time out for a minute. I am not doing that to fill any void. No. Me, you know, like, okay, we all do things. People mm-hmm. drink. I mean, sure, like, you know, but it's if I couldn't afford it, trust me, it would be over. Right. I would go live in a one room, in, in one room studio somewhere, and I, I would be happy. Right. Well, it also, you know, when you don't have the, that anxiety of, oh, God, this is going to catch up with me, or, oh, God, I can't afford this, and it's going to prevent me from paying my rent next month, whatever it is. I mean, when you don't have that, that anxiety, it feels much better about living in the moment. I'll say that. Yeah. And you're not doing it like to say, look at me. Right. Oh, exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's why the Chrisleys are in jail. Yes. Yeah. And what's the story with that? I still have never understood that. I mean, it was definitely t- – because people are like, why did they get more time than Jen Shaw? Like, they definitely mm-hmm. have more charges, like tax evasion. Mm-hmm. They also, I think – I think at one point Julie lied or they were caught in lies, like mm-hmm. lies on something. They were lying to the government about something. So Which it's you like – should never do. You should never do. You should also <laughs> never – listen, if you want to do something bad, tax – not paying your taxes is probably – that would be a, like last on my list. Mm, like yeah. that's really – there's no coming back from that. Right, right. right. That ain't going to end well ever. No, and we've seen so many people go to jail for that. I mean, didn't Wesley Snipes go to jail for that back in the day? I mean – I like the situation from Jersey Shore. Right, right. There's a lot of people. So it happens. No matter who you are, you'll go to jail for that. I mean, listen, I don't want to pay my taxes either. I yeah, want more money. Does? I want all my money, yeah. but – you know, I'm like crazy with that stuff, like really anal. Like, well, okay, maybe we should take this, but no, no, no. If it's going to be a red flag, like I don't want to say I did. Like, this is just pay it. Like, yeah. I just don't come back and like I'm one of those people, right? Right. Like, I don't want you coming for me in five years for no, anything. No, of course not. Okay, so let's talk about what are the hot topics right now. You've had a lot of people on your show. You just had Suzanne um, Summers, Summers on your show who made some news and said that she was one of the original people that was asked to be on The View with Barbara Walters and she turned that down. Um, so, she did. Yeah. So Which that- we just kind of – it wasn't even – like that's where being a podcast – being in my fourth year, I have a trained ear now when I hear something. I'm like, what? So you know it's going to be news. And you – well, yeah, like that – the whole reason that even came up is – I mean, I didn't ask about it. I didn't know. I said, you know, what about you on Shark Tank? We've had Bethany. We've had Alex Rodriguez. You know, Suzanne Summers, Thighmaster. I mean, Suzanne Summers has real money. Mm. Talk about people that have real money. Yeah. The Thighmaster is huge. So I was like, would you ever go on Shark Tank? I figured that alone could have been something. And she mm. was like, no, you know, it's not really for me. I don't really vie for time, you know, airtime well. And yeah. I'm kind of like alone. You know, actually, I was at, it was for her, it was nothing. She didn't know what she was doing. She wasn't supposed to be a thing. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. Like the original <laughs> view with Barbara Walters, like they actually wanted you. And she was like, yeah, and you know, I, I just could see, could sense that this show would be vying for airtime, talking over people, I mean, exactly what The View is. Mm. So I was like, David, stay on this, throw the script away, this is something. And I was like, and then you don't know, so then you Google afterwards, like, Suzanne Summers, The View, and you're like, I don't see anything, and then you do it, oh, she was on The View. I'm like, this is not out there, right. which is, because, you know, I mean- She's 76. Like, there's many interviews. Mm-hmm. Like, the view started when? I'm like, this could be out there, but it's not. And even if it's out there, you could still get press with it. Yeah. Like, it's, that's the crazy thing about this. If someone said something five years ago, no one, unless you're in the weeds, no one really. But I was like, this is not out there. I'm like, this is a major thing that she would have been sitting there. Suzanne Somers, that's yeah. pretty big. Right. That would have been great. I would have loved to see her on it. One of my favorite interviews ever. Yeah, she's fantastic. So another thing you've gotten press for is talking about who is on Ozempic in Hollywood. Uh, or maybe not in Hollywood, but in reality TV. And, and in Hollywood. Okay. I've talked so, about it. And your own journey, so to speak, on Ozempic yourself. Manjaro or in the semi-glutide, but yeah, same thing. Okay. So people that have heard about this um, that don't know much about it, why don't you tell them how it makes you feel, what it does? I why, why are people so nuts about this topic? 
And well, you know, I think, I think, listen, to be honest with you, you'd be shocked. This really is the amount of people that slip into my DMs. I would say only 1% is, is a hater. 99% are like, how can I do it? Well, yes. And I've referred people to my true medical professional that Mm -hmm. you work with that needs to write a prescription. But most people are like, you know, thank God you're just being honest about it. Yeah. Really, I think that's where – because let's face it, everyone's lying about it. So – Right. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, I think that people want to act like they're losing weight on their own and it's hard work. And I think probably people are embarrassed because they don't want to admit that they're taking a drug that could probably go to somebody else who is sick with diabetes. It's a diabetes drug for people that don't know. That, and the side effect is it helps you lose weight. So that's why yes. a lot of people are taking it. Um, and it could be for huge amounts of weight or it could be for even just a little tweak in your body, the last little bit that you can't get off. So. So for you, what was it like? You lost a decent amount of weight, right? Like almost 40 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. In like a – almost in a healthy way though. I mean it just cuts down your appetite, right? Well, you you tell me. I mean, yeah. So I guess that's the controversy that A, you're taking something that right now, like Manjaro, is only prescribed for people that, you know, have diabetes. However, mm-hmm. it is going to be FDA approved for weight loss. Like yeah. this – I said this from the first day and I will stand by this. You can love this – you can hate this. This has changed the weight loss industry forever. Right. You can quote me on that. I was just in the Wall Street Journal talking <laughs> about this. I don't know everything, but when I focus on something, I, it's like this is Botox. This is truly Botox. Mm-hmm. So this has changed the weight loss industry forever. And it's a quick fix. I mean, you could lose a, a lot of weight very quickly. Since and October, then, I lost 40 pounds. Yeah, and then keep it off too because it's something you can stay on and maintain in cycles or whatever. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but, um, you know, you, you could get it off and keep it off. It's well, not like fluctuating. Well, this is where a lot – well, first of all, yes. Now, I mean, I just want to say because people – I think some people, maybe if you're not educated by this, think that you – Take your injection once a week and then life is good and you eat a key lime pie for breakfast and you have pizza for lunch. and So it's like none of that is true. Like you're not cheating the system in the sense that you're eating and enjoying life. Mm. You are doing this and you're right. It really kills your appetite in large part because of the side effects are so bad, at least for me. Mm. Interesting. So, what were the side effects you had? I'll tell you. And but so I mean for me it's like, look, that's where it's like it's no picnic. And I tell people that slip into my DMs that are like, can you connect me? To-? I'm like, I'm out of this. I'm not the medical professional. You actually need to go through a consult and a blood test. But I'm like, if you're asking me if I have side effects, I'm gonna be honest, mm-hmm. there there you do. I mean, everything. Like I've had all of them. you you get First of all, you get really exhausted at times. Mm -hmm. Like I was – in the beginning, it was worse than COVID. Like I could not keep my eyes open. Mm -hmm. That's – I mean really – and then also at some point you're eating so little in the beginning that it's because of that. But I mean you do get nauseous to either throwing up or your stomach is in such cramps that you feel like you're going to throw up but don't. Mm -hmm. Then there's – the worst feeling. For me, the absolute worst side effect is the digestive issues. Mm. So here's, you know, for- Sounds uh, wonderful. Well, here's also, let me tell you this. It also, the way it works, just for people that don't know, is once you inject yourself, you, you, the food stays in your stomach. So if you and I went out for a lunch right now, you would just say the normal digestion time for that is 12 hours or mm-hmm. whatever. I'm just making that up. For me, it will it stays in my system for maybe like 36 hours. So imagine if we both had a burger and fries. You would be hungry for dinner because it's lunchtime mm-hmm. because that's normal, whereas my burger will sit in my stomach probably for two days. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's how it works. Wow. Oh, to so, keep you full, you mean. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's okay. just this. And again, I'm not a doctor. So everyone, I cannot pres- – like, mm-hmm. I'm just oversimplifying. But like, so when you say burp a certain way, you know how when you have that great like Italian meal and you burp and you're like, oh, it's so satisfying, mm-hmm. that, that chicken parm I had last night for dinner. What a great taste. Here, your bur- the burp is so is tied to something that has been in your stomach for like three days. Oh, gross. Okay. Yeah, we can just leave it at that. The burps are the absolute worst. So let's play a game. Who, who it, are they on Ozempic or are they not on it? Or are they just losing weight uh, and, and healthy by going to the gym? Let's see. Okay. Um, let me think. 
Um, Because there's a lot. Okay, so Kim, like Kim and Croy we were talking. First of all, Croy doesn't need it, but do you think Kim? Zolziak. I need to take a better look at her. I Mm. would say no. Someone just sent me a picture and they're like, look how much weight she lost. And I'm like, I don't see it. I didn't see a ton. Did you see it? Do you think it's a ton of weight? I think she looks good for her. I've never really followed her her body too much. I mean, she always is showing her wigs and her hair and her face and her makeup. Believe it or not, I'm going to say no Ozempic. I think it's like a normal weight loss and she's always been kind of athletic. I would say for now, I'm going to say Kim is normal. And look what she's going through, a divorce. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say normal. Normal weight loss for Kim. Okay. How so about sad. Adele? Ozempic. Really? I, I think so. Okay. It's such a drastic – I mean, this is not hard for people to get these yeah. days. Now you factor in celebrity and someone who has endless amounts of money. Mm-hmm. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Okay. And that's, by the way, what when people say to me, they're like, thank God you're being honest, because I think that's the person that's sitting home that is eating a salad a day and is drinking water and is so trying so hard to exercise and is starving and is just miserable with how hard they're trying Mm -hmm. and the weight is not coming off because they're not 19 years old. I think that's why they appreciate someone that says... I didn't, you know, yes, I I still exercise. It is diet because you're not hungry, but like this is how I lost my weight. They're like, at least we know why you had such a drastic weight loss and we are not beating ourselves up for the- the, Because we can't do it, yeah. Because listen, when you're on a diet and you're starving and you're like, I'm just going to eat everything in sight now Mm -hmm. because I've been trying so hard and eating lettuce and and vinegar and and peas and carrots and I want the And nothing is coming off. Fuck this. I'm just going to eat 12 pizzas a day. That's at least for me when I was dieting. At least they're like, now we get it, why it's working for you and not for me. There isn't anything wrong with for me at 49 years old and I'm trying so hard and I just can't take this weight off. What about um, – So I don't buy it, Adele. Black China. Ooh. I would say no Ozempic. I feel that it's like a normal weight loss. I don't mm-hmm. see such a drastic change with her. Also, she's taken a lot of her implants out. Yeah. Um, or made them smaller, whatever, however you do that. But she looks much more natural and tiny to me. Yeah, I would say all of that plus like a healthy, clean lifestyle and mm-hmm. there's no more lawsuit with Rob Kardashian that's mm-hmm. in the past, I would say – no Ozempic. She's just let things go naturally. Yeah. Um, J-Lo. I would say no Ozempic. I, I mean, agree. she's always – I mean, I think she's a freak of nature. Mm-hmm. I don't understand it. What is she now, 51, I think? Something like that, yeah. 52. I mean, she is just – I mean, oh, my God. Did you see her at the Met? Oh, she killed – she no, is just – No, I didn't. She – She looked great. She was in Ralph Lauren. The theme this year was Karl Lagerfeld. She looked, I think she's so natural. Yeah, she's beautiful. Not normal. That yeah. that's your body and that's <clears throat> your skin and all that. I, look, okay, yeah. Do I think she's put needles in her face for Botox? I would say sure. Yeah. But she also has that darker skin, so she has that glow. She looks more natural and younger no matter her age. Yeah. So, and she's a dancer, you know, she's fit. So, speaking of J-Lo, let's talk about the news that was just out about them and people are trying to dissect the body language between her and her husband, Ben. What do you think about that? I mean, listen, this keeps coming up, right? Mm-hmm. It came up at the Emmys. Now, I saw something. I don't even know if this is true. Some, like, mouth reader, someone who mm-hmm. reads lips, apparently read their lips and said it was them on the carpet. And he was like, are you okay? Do you want me to get out of your limelight? A little bit to the left. It was all about their poses and getting the pictures in. And mm-hmm. the exact opposite of what people are saying. Right. Right. Then we have that car door where, I mean, you slam a car door. That's not, I mean, a lot of people slam a car door. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you throw the door closed. You're like, oh, whoops. It must be really hard for them living under the microscope where it almost seems like the tone is people don't want them to succeed. People want there to be some sort of issue between the two of them. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, maybe because she's like looking for love all the time and that's the narrative surrounding her and mm-hmm. they were together. And and she gets married very fast. She gets married and falls very fast. Yeah. And this was fast, even though, you know, and I mean, I guess also because of Ben and he had his own addiction issues and he's right. painted as like a bad guy in the media. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't really get it. Like, why aren't people coming for all these other couples mm-hmm. that are out there newly forming? I don't know. I I hope that it 
lasts, right? Yeah. Do we need another Kim and Croy? Like, I would like to see J-Lo. Look, if it didn't work, it wouldn't shock me mm-hmm. because look what they're under. The, this media scrutiny. And, like, she obviously works all the time and he works a lot. But I don't know. I think I think there's something to be said about coming it's like the person you marry that you went to high school with and you reconnect at the reunion when you're 42 years old i love that yeah i mean wouldn't that be great to have somebody from your past that knows you that cares about you for who you were um and isn't so impressed necessarily but has a respect for you so wait a minute i want to talk about a couple that um seems to be in a very good place what do you think of the news about chriselle from Selling Sunset and her new marriage with a woman, G Flip. Well, her ex, Jason Oppenheim, says he totally supports it. Mm. They are just the stellar couple. You know, it's been a year, also a year. It hasn't been forever. I'm not for or against it. It's just the whole thing, like, just like myself, mm. Mr. Jason Oppenheim, another person I can relate to, <laughs> is successful in business and just doesn't really want children. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd be, I would listen. If Jason said, Oh, my girlfriend and I now are having a child, I would be just as shocked, yeah. you know, because that's the whole reason. And he loved Chriselle so much and she wants a child. We saw it on the show. The new season of Selling Sunset is back on May 19th. I cannot <laughs> wait. I, I don't work for Netflix. I'm just putting that out there. But we're just so excited to, to I, see it. Uh, Rachel, and by beyond. the way, Nick Cannon's baby mama is the newest um, girl on it. So this should be a really interesting season. It's going to be great. And so, like, that would shock me. I mean, he basically broke up with her because, like, I love you so much. And First of all, I do believe that they broke up and now they work together. And he's also the boss and he just has such respect and love for her as a person. I love to see that. I agree with that, too. But, you know, it's interesting that everybody thought the reasoning was because of the timing of wanting a child. Okay, so now she's fallen in love with a woman, which... We haven't heard that this was something in her past. I mean, I think this is a new kind of development in her sexuality. And as we know, if she's going to have a baby with this woman, they have to adopt or do something with a surrogate, which is the same kind of stuff she could have done with Jason if they were on the same page. Maybe this girl is on the same page with her and they want kids immediately, which is why they got married now. I mean, I would hope so. Yeah. That's so it's that not. That would be cool. Yeah. Like it's not strange to me. Or I'm not that shocked. I would just hope, like, have you lost? Like, are you are you on the rebound? Are you, mm. or are you so in love with this person that you forgot? Like, you want a family and children. Right. If they announce they're having a family and a children, whichever way, I would be like, this makes complete sense. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Because what do that's, you think about people uh, finding a new path in their sexuality late in life <laughs> after a breakup? I don't really – I'm look, I'm all for it. Mm. I don't know if I really understand it. Yeah. I mean, like, look, uh, I don't know. I I understand so many things, mm-hmm. especially as a gay man. <laughs> I if Fluidity is less – I mean, look, there are people that are fluid, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't even mean, like, bisexual. I mean, you just talk to certain people that are like, I just – I mean, what a great thing to be yeah. able to just meet the person and, and connect with them. You know, like Tyler Posey from from what what show is that on MTV? That vampire show, Teen Wolf. I mean, he's he's more or less into women, but is like, oh no, I'm fluid, and I've been with plenty of guys, and I just don't really. Un- I, I I don't know. I'm so not fluid. So yeah, I'm, I'm not either. I mean, I like a real man. I mean, I like you, manly You prefer men. Croy over Tom Sandoval and his I nail do. polish, so I yes, understand. Yeah, I couldn't. I don't think I could be attracted to somebody who wears nail polish because I don't really? like feminine qualities in the person that I date. That's just me, you know, personally. Um, I think it would bother me. But, you know, I don't have anything against people finding their person because they fall in love with the person inside. I mean, I get it. I haven't found my I mean, I'm still, you know, I'm not married. So it hasn't happened to me yet. You don't want to start dating women? I don't think so. No. (laughs) Unless she was super manly. So I don't think, you know, at that point, I could date a man. There's 
manly women out there. Well, okay, but I, 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 I'd I like to find a man. No, I think I'd like to off? find a man first. I think okay. that, would, uh, that would be better. But speaking of LGBTQ and, and that kind of fluidity at the let's moment, let's talk about that because it's a really hot topic. Have you had anyone on your show um, to talk about that topic yet? What topic? Well, LGBTQ in general um, and the fact that it's in sports. I mean, so many people, that's become kind of an entertainment news piece because of um, the, of the Jenners and, you know, um, the Caitlin has been very vocal about, mm-hmm. right. Caitlin's been very vocal about a trans, trans women should not be able to compete in women's sports. sports yeah. And what, it's because of that one person whose name like escapes me who I guess won everything. Oh yes. The swimmer. swimmer. Yes. yes. Uh huh. Look, a Leah, lot of people agree with – listen, I'm not exactly – I every time I say this, people are like, why do you say that it's, it's such a bad – I'm like, I'm not exactly the most woke person. Everyone's like, why do you say woke as if it's a bad word? Mm. I don't, but I also don't believe in like a lot of things. Like I don't believe in like coddling your children. No, like mm. not everyone gets a fucking medal. Sorry. I'm actually really, I, as a gay man, way more conservative than people think. Mm-hmm. I believe, uh, yeah, I be- but I completely, and a lot of people agree with Caitlin. I disagree. I've disagreed on my show before. And then, I mean, man, if you think people in middle America or around the world hate gay people, they hate trans people even yeah. more. Oh yeah. my God. Well, they're scared of what they don't that understand. Means, I think. Yeah. I mean, the comments I got oh. were like, why would you, why would you this? And, you know, it's not a real woman. And like, just mm. like this person can't have a baby. So, I mean, the comments were disgusting. So mm. I disagree. I disagree. I feel like I disagree with Caitlyn on this one. And I love a little Caitlyn Jenner. I'll mm. be honest. Mm-hmm. Well, I've, she's, by the way, people have a, can say anything they want about her. That woman, when she was a man, was the most amazing athlete. And if you let her compete now... Um, she could still beat half the men. So, of course, she'd beat the women. Um, That's why she I, says it. Yeah. Oh, well, so I haven't even heard her comments, but it seems like common sense to me. Um, and I and we dis- all know Caitlin's conservative. Yeah, yeah. And and I do disagree with you because, I mean, this is some a, a topic that do. I'm not familiar with because I'm not in that community. I don't even, you know, I'm not even in the sports community, right? Either one. But um, I think that in women's sports, somebody who was born – a biological man would have way too much advantage, even if their, you know, hormones have changed because they're given hormone therapy. It just seems like the advantage is different. But what do I know? It no. seems like that. It just seems like it would be an unfair playing field. Well, that's why a lot of people agree with you, and I totally under like I I get the argument. Mm-hmm. I totally understand where you're coming from, where yeah. Caitlin's coming from. I just am like, listen, like you say, and by the way. You can say what you want about Caitlyn and people hate her because she's conservative. But if you're not, you know, in the community or you don't like you're not in the entertainment business, you're not in certain – if you're really outside and you really don't – the point is around the world, mm-hmm. people don't know a lot of people. Caitlyn is really probably one of the most famous, if not the most famous, trans woman uh, nation now you know yeah. there's many others and we have pose and ryan murphy and like there's plenty of people mm-hmm. if you live a certain like if you're just with the world but mm-hmm. if you're really isolated like all these haters it, caitlin is the face of it so you can hate her all you want yeah and say she's conservative she still has done more just by existing as formerly bruce jetter for the trans community in a lot of if, listen the trans community don't like Caitlyn. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? So, but my old thing is like, if you were born as, like, if you were born, Rachel, mm-hmm. you could tell. Yeah. And you were f- six years old and people are like, this is disgusting. There's a lot of controversy that you should not let, you know, young children go through. Like, yeah, whatever. But like, if you at six years old were like, just disgusted by Barbies and your pink pants mm-hmm. and just... All you want, and this is a lot of stereotypes, all you wanted to do is play. So the bottom line is you truly were a man. Yeah. Like that is the way your brain thought. It's mm-hmm. nothing to do with your sexuality. Just you were a man. And so imagine like we talk about Ozempic and people that want to look a certain way. Imagine if you looked down and you were so 
just disgusted by the and not body only you disgusted, were disgusted, felt like you were in the wrong body. Felt yeah. So un, un, at ease in your own skin. Yes. I think a lot of people can't understand what that's like. They can't. Yeah. So I that's think the problem. people got to tread lightly on the, on the trans thing. Right. Because you don't know what they're going through. But it's like a fact thing about whether or not they're better at something because they were born a man and with more muscle mass. I mean, it's kind of simple to oh. me. I get it, but, but so I know you don't agree. No, but the only rule, the only I'm going to get to my point, and then you can answer. But like the only point is, so like if you right, if you had to be a man, say for mm-hmm. you, or someone had to be a, like that would trump. You would lose your parents over it. You would lose yeah. your significant other. You would you would get into a category that you may not be as sexually desirable to people, which I'm not saying is the case, but to a lot of people, like that would trump friends. That would trump a jo- that would trump everything. Mm-hmm. Like you would have to go through this. Ch- you could deny it all you want. People come out as gay, you know. But like you would have to be a man. That mm-hmm. would that would you're you would lose everything in the world for that because that's who you were. So now let's say someone does that and you know is now a woman. Where now, so now you've lived your whole life not being included. <laughs> so now you're a woman, period. And that's why when so I think it's so ignorant that when people say like this is not a real woman, well, it is. It is you just yeah. don't understand. So now where all I'm asking is where do you now want this woman to compete if that's a sports person? I get that it. is my only thing. I get. Tell it. me where I you want this I person because now you're saying you can't be included, right? So these people just feel not included. But all we're the time. putting them back to like age seven. Yeah, or whatever. That's really hard. That's my only thing. I get it. I mean, there's a lot of compassion that goes with it. And and trans people, LGBTQ in general, I think there's a bill being considered right now in Florida, maybe in other states, that uh, of whether or not doctors can um, not prescribe certain things and, you know, they, they won't even take them in their office. So right. this whole feeling, um, you know, for – at quote unquote, these people seems almost like they're not human, that they don't deserve the same rights that we yeah. do. And and I think that's I think that's really unfair. I think yeah. that's crazy that people are considering to not give health care to to trans people or people that choose to be a certain sexuality. I mean, I think that's really incredible that uh, that's what our government has come down to. I mean, we're kind of taking steps back, yeah. right? Yeah. With the so, abortion thing for women too. I mean, it's I think it's really incredible. So it's like, I, I look, and I do understand it. I do understand the mm-hmm. argument with the Caitlin and everyone, but it's more like, well, then where do these people compete? Yeah. You know? So that's just my only thing. Speaking of sports, I find this story interesting. The, the WNBA is starting up again this season. Um, a lot of uh, women in, in the WNBA have decided to not stand or even be in the arena during the national anthem. Have you heard about this? No. Um, and the WNBA is known for being very supportive of the LGBTQ community. I think a lot of women on these teams are, you know, bisexual, lesbian, whatever sure. they choose to identify with, but not a lot are heterosexual. Um, so they uh, all, you know, the WNBA really supports that. Um, but Brittany Griner, do you remember her? She was um, in Russia. She was detained yes. there for having some drug paraphernalia in, in her suitcase. She, the America brought her back to uh, this country to give her her freedom again. And um, she is not, uh, is reportedly not going to stand during um, the national anthem. What are your thoughts on that? Why? So why isn't she going to? I'm confused. Because she wants to support her teammates because they don't believe that a lot of rights have been given to women in athletics in general. And they're just not supporting, you know, the national anthem or or American uh, Americans or America, so to speak. And I think it's really interesting. I mean, of all the people. What do you mean? Because like they're taking away rights from like the LGBT LGBTQ community? LGBTQ, black women, um, you know, they don't support, that America doesn't right. support its country. Like we're going backwards. Yeah. So we're not going to stand during the national Yeah. Anthem. So of all people that I would love to see get up and put her hand over her heart when the national anthem is played, I think it would be Brittany Griner. And I think people would just get so emotional seeing her because America brought her home. And yeah. I would love to see her be the one that kind of turns the tables to be like, you know, People can have their own individual feelings about things, but you could still be proud to be an American. And I, I wonder what you're feeling. Well. I mean, in that sense, yeah. I mean, if I was in Russia and I was being detained and couldn't come home, 
I would be like, that would try just like the desire to be who you really are when yeah. the sec, you know, like I, I would, I would stand. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it would be really, I would nice be like this country her. save me and that I'm sorry. Like I would, my life would be so much worse if I wasn't here. So like I have to honor this. Yeah. Yeah. I just wish that. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So we saw, t- speaking of people in prison before, um, we saw Jen Shaw prison photos. Do you care? I mean, Oh, she's just such an awful person. She looks pretty put together. Yeah, for, right? she did. She looked like she had a nice, uh, her, <coughs> her hair was back very nicely done. There's no grays. I mean, where's the hair? Is she, her hair colored? No, I don't know. But, you know, I saw she was wearing glasses, so she doesn't get her, her, her contacts there. And I don't know. I th- I have to look close. I thought I saw like a watch and maybe earrings. I saw her wedding ring. Well, I mean. Yeah, you would think that they would take all that away. I mean, listen, I'm not saying that I want to go to prison, <laughs> but it, I just like where we started with Raquel, like yeah. to have like a time out from life. I mean, so I'd say your time out for like, I mean, please sign me up for a time out, girl. Yeah. I'd like to go. And I know you have to wake up and you have to work and all that, but that didn't look so, I was like, all this jewelry and bling. I didn't even notice the wedding ring. Right, right. Wow. Um, okay, so other hot topics. Anna Nicole Smith, they have a movie coming out about her. You actually interviewed two of her close friends. I know what them really like? well. They know Anna. Like, I've, they've been on my show, Pat, Patrick and Paul. They've been on my show many times. They, you know, they were, first of all, they were on the Anna Nicole show. Like, they really knew her. They were offered, like, which I found interesting, which doesn't shock me, like, over a million dollars basically to get the paparazzi and like TMZ all back in the day into her funeral and all that. And they were just like, what? we just couldn't do it. Wow. And this is what they claim. And I was like, I mean, listen, you know, you want to honor your friend, but somebody did it. Somebody's going to do this. Right, right. I don't know. Um, that that's a dilemma. I'm going to be honest. If I'm yeah. being really honest, I would take them. I would take the money. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't dishonor you, but I would, I would just, I mean, all right, this is going to get out there. Yeah, I, I want the check to clear my bank account for a million. I saw recently. Come on in. Yeah, I saw recently that they said that they didn't believe that Anna's wishes would be to have Larry Burkhead raise the child. They are very anti-Larry. Yeah. I can tell you that. Do very. you think they have any um, connection with Danny Lynn? I mean, I, I know them really well. Mm-hmm. I could say, you know, no. Wow. Well. That's I mean, like connection. You mean like? Are they talking? Oh, to her? I thought you meant like. Are they the father? No, like, no. I mean, are they speaking to her? Have they grown I, up in her life because they were so close to her mother? I think. I mean, listen. I only know what they tell me. Yeah. But I think you know, according to them, Larry. Even that's he moved to Kentucky, couldn't make it in Hollywood, and just like talk about someone you want to get on the Rachel. You could tell misunderstood podcast. Oh yeah, no, I would Larry love would to get Larry there. Burkhead or and Danny, Danny Lynn. Yes. Yeah. Because I think they're so interesting and you never hear how it was to grow up without a mother who's so famous and iconic. And, um, you know, I would love to hear about the struggles he went through to prove that he was the one that deserved to raise her. I mean, there was that guy, Howard, the lawyer that said he was the father. He was written on the birth certificate. Um, and from what these friends that you interviewed have said, they've said that uh, Anna Nicole disliked Larry and made fun of him a lot. So uh, it's interesting to see how that turned out. And like, I'd love to ask Danny Lynn, like, you know, I mean, the world, a lot of the world says your father's a bad guy. Are you aware of that? How does that make you feel? Mm-hmm. But or, is like, he a bad guy? We just I don't, don't know. know. We, we, we haven't heard from him in the know. last 16 years or however long it's been, right? How old is she now? Or how long has it been since I, I, I think she's in her teens. Yeah. I mean, I saw that. There was a picture that yeah. went around recently. I was like, oh, wow. And remember, she had cross eye. Her eyes went in separate ways. She had her eyes fixed. I mean, I really wow. would love to hear really? how, yeah, when she was I a baby, her eyes went in opposite directions. She had that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's she's a beautiful girl. And she was the son who died her 100% or were the different fathers? I don't even know. The oh, uh, I, again, I don't know that either. Anna's who son was the, who died? Who was the Daniel s- father of Daniel? Yeah, I don't know. That would be interesting. So there's so many questions to ask. I'd yeah. love to talk to them. Um, Those that would be. A good I one. also heard that Lorena Bobbitt has a movie coming out. Remember her? I mean, yeah. I love those "Where Are They Now?" stories. I would love to have her on. You know who I want to have on? Who? Really bad. I think my team has tried. 
But I think she needs money of some sort. That was exo- I want Amy Fisher. Oh yeah. I mean, we're from New York. Yeah. I mean, I would take Mary Jo Budafuco too, <laughs> but I want Amy Fisher. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would, I would love, love to her. hear whatever happened to her. How did she get over that stigma? Did she go to jail? I don't even remember. I, if people don't remember, Amy Fisher was the woman who was having an affair with a married man. What was his name again? Joey Buttafuoco. Joey Buttafuoco. How could I Welcome forget? Welcome to Long Island, people. And she went and shot the woman that he was married to in the face. Yeah. And she survived. Um, and that was Mary Jo. Mary Jo Buttafuoco. Yeah. And uh, she used to be on Howard Stern all the time. I wonder, did they stay married? I think so. Oh my gosh. And why did she shoot out. the woman? She just said, This is my she man. She said, This and is I my want. man. She probably was, wow. was um, jealous. But by the way, how do you get over that stigma? Did she ever get married? Did, was a man ever able, able to, to, you know, let that go and marry her? I, I find that I to would be love to talk to her. Yeah. Did she learn a lesson? Did you she know who still you should also go after, which it's not going to happen? Huh? It's a hard one. Monica Lewinsky. I, I still want her. Well, you know, the thing with Monica, I know Monica. I've spoken to her a few times. Uh, you know, her story, she's told her story so many times. So I don't think she's necessarily misunderstood anymore. Right. I think people get the story. So I, I she's an obvious, I the think. The Ryan for, Murphy American Crime Story was brilliant. Yeah, it was brilliant. It was very wow. good. And I love that she pro- co-produced it and was able to give her side. And it didn't make her look very good in my, uh, in my opinion. I mean, it made her look like she kind of went after the president and really – made it difficult for him to get rid of her for a little bit. I so. would still love just like 20 minutes with her. Yeah. Oh, of course. Well, who, who wouldn't? Um, okay. So we're, we're back in New York. What are your, when is Real Housewives of New York coming out? 7-16. I need to think for a minute. Oh gosh. Like How do you tomorrow. Know this already? <laughs> yeah. Oh no. They did. They have, they have a trailer with no pictures, but it's just an apple sitting there and you see a hand reach in with manicure nails and take the apple and you hear a huge crunch, huge bite mm. out of, off air. And it says 716. Mm, Andy Cohn says it's different. Yeah, he doesn't sound that excited about it, but maybe that's just because he doesn't want to get anybody's hopes up and wants them to literally come in with a clean slate. What do you think? I don't know. I mean, listen, Andy Cohn... From having a Bravo podcast behind the velvet rope, which is every day of the week, Rachel. Mm. Um, you listen. It, it you could be honest. It's his favorite franchise. He lives here. He's connected. Like he knew Jill Zarin before this. He knew Luann. So, mm. like, also what I said recently on my show is Andy. These are his peers. Andy is fifty two. Luann is fifty. I mean, it must be hard. Listen, he cares about Andy Cohen and Ben and Lucy more than anyone else. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for his, you know, net worth of $75 million, he'll do everything he has to do with the job. Yeah. So he has no problem firing all his friends. But it must be – I'm sure he's not into watching a bunch of 32-year-old, 37-year-old influencers – running around New York. Right. I'm sure I mean listen, Andy Cohn doesn't go to anything housewives. He says that. Last summer before he ran into me at schools out for the Henry Martin Foundation in East Hampton, he stopped by Luann's Fro Fose launch at Topping Rose. I mean oh he God. doesn't she's right like he's friends with Luann. He's yeah. friend so I mean I'm sure he would rather be hanging out with like Luann and Ramona and mm-hmm. Jill and Sonia than these people. So I don't think it's – I'm sure it's harder for him too. Yeah, yeah. But still different isn't really – doesn't sound – listen, I'm not – Do you think they should try a new city also? Listen, I've said this. Like I feel so mixed about the new New York. Mm-hmm. I mean looking at the cast and knowing – like having heard of them, I'm not like overly excited. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Yeah. But listen, I've said this. They need to make it – because this is what I think they should have done. I think if they did like a real-life Gossip Girl and took even younger, like 20 some They tried that. I they know. They tried that. And it's they tried really it a bunch worked. of times. Yeah. And they tried it with Gallery Girls. They tried it with New York City Prep. Mm-hmm. But like look at like the hills and like they did the city, like a bunch of like mm-hmm. – Bitchy, wealthy, like you have to like lean in. Mm-hmm. It could be diverse. Absolutely. This is New York, but like, you know, looks the part. I mean, has so much money. The most obnoxious, over the top women that don't know, you know, anything and have daddies like a real life gossip girl. Yeah. 
Yeah. That would be annoying, but we would hate those people and we would love to hate them. This is like in between it for me. It might be interesting. Yeah. I think a great idea for a show is everyone's moving to Palm Beach or to Florida. I'm moving to Palm Beach. I think they should do a new kind of series about women who are on their second act of life. They don't have to be married. Maybe they are. But like it's a real struggle and hustle figuring out how to get your kid into school, having to pay the bills, having to date again, um, having to find new friends when you move. But all these New Yorkers are moving down to Palm Beach. I think that's kind of a great episode to figure – to see how they do in a new environment when they come from having the personality of a New Yorker and you're doing it alone. I – I'm nominating myself for that. I was just going to say, <laughs> you really just want to launch an entire show around you and yeah, we'll cast basically. people that you become friends with. Yeah. Well, no, I, I think it's interesting. Like, I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to know very many people. Have you met people. anyone there yet? Well, yes, I know some people there. Yes, my, my daughter's going to start school there in August. And I went to a school meeting already and met a couple kids in her class and their parents. So I'm navigating what that's like to meet all the new parents. But I think that's kind of interesting to follow someone on a new path of life as opposed to meeting new people in New York who have already been here who I don't even know are real New Yorkers. You know what I mean? Like I don't know what makes them, you know, uh, so good to be on the Housewives of New York. And most of them aren't even Housewives, I don't think. Anymore. No, this time around we have a lot of single mm. people, more, yeah. more. Yeah, I'm not sure. But it's like, isn't it interesting that <clears> – <throat> sorry to interrupt you, but The Housewives of New York are categorically the only show that doesn't have husbands for the most part, and they can't seem to find a steady boyfriend when they do well, have, that's get York, married. Honey. Well, that's what I was saying. When they do get married, the divorce happens very quickly like with Luann. Um, so it's – Almost very interesting. It's, it says a lot about New Yorkers and how hard it is to meet the right man here, how hard it is to be a single woman here. Um, so I think that kind of show is even more interesting. Dating is always a real interesting thing. I loved Love is Blind. I want to do that. Really? I want to, have you watched it? it? It's hosted by Nick and Vanessa. Yes. No, I have not. They're, you know, they just had their own controversies. Mm -hmm. Yes. People didn't like them after the, um, they reunion. said she was too biased. He was too biased, but especially her. They're not losing but that their show jobs. Isn't, people. No, but that show isn't about the host as much because that show was so interesting to me because people are meeting behind a wall. It's very similar to online dating, although you get to see a picture. You have to like the person's personality first and, and really do people connect last them. that have gotten married yes, from the show yes, really absolutely people more than the babies. bachelor more than the bachelorette yeah actually people haven't had babies from that show that's um, marriage at first sight that one i'm also obsessed with i want to try any of these shows because love what is i'm blind doing is, is not interest. working no lo love is blind is interesting yeah Listen, I know you You should have been on the New York Housewives. I get it. <laughs> Let's put out there, maybe there'll be a show about you in West Palm, Palm Beach. There it are others. It doesn't have others. to be about me. It's just, I find that interesting. It's an interesting, listen, I think what they need to do with this new, New it's already filmed. I hope New York is like in Housewife. Like if yeah. you can capture and show New York, mm -hmm. the city that is interesting to people that have never been here. They don't. I mean, we've had a million shows in New York, but yeah. it still works. The hustle and bustle of New York, charity events. I mean, listen, I say all the time, I want my housewives to be uber, uber, uber wealthy. That's mm -hmm. why Beverly Hills is so – like, I think no one really – I think people want to escape. So there's so much money here. Yeah. Yes, a lot of it's finance money and they're never going to do it. And a lot of really wealthy people will never be on TV – I just hope that they capture that side of like, you know, you're, it doesn't matter, like whatever the rules of the charity gala benefit are, you're so rich and you're on the board, they're going to let you in, like they're going to break the rules for mm -hmm. you. You know, I want that uber, like wealth here is, could be as interesting as Beverly Hills. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to get that. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. Um, okay. Last couple things. Erica yeah. Jane is now in Vegas. She's heading to Vegas to bet on blonde and guess what? David from Behind the Velvet Rope is heading to Vegas. Uh. <laughs> September and December, honey. Okay. You, you can come with me one of the times. How did she get a residency there? Tell me that. Well, I feel, you know, there is some chatter that she has this new, much older boyfriend and he's a big gambler. And I'm like, I don't know if that's how. I think, look, I've seen her. I saw the Pretty Mess tour mm -hmm. multiple times. <laughs> there is, I mean, there is something about her performing it's very enjoyable mm -hmm. so she's good 
I think she's good. And she puts on a good show. I think she puts, I mean, listen, picture Erica Jane, honest. You want to go back to Ozempic or not? I say Ozempic. <laughs> I mean, she's looking good. And, but like, yeah, picture Erica Jane on a stage, costume changes, smoke. Hmm. Yes, there's mostly gay men in the audience. There's plenty of women too. I don't know if there's any straight men there, but like lots of gay men. Yeah, the Erica Jane is, it's a real brand. It's a real thing. And how many songs does she have that she can make a show out of? On the Well, there's a lot. We have how many fucks? We have painkiller. Oh my goodness! Yeah, we no. really know her. We have her pretty set. mess. Oh, honey. <laughs> so she's going to put on a good show. You think? Listen, if you think about it, this isn't. It's Vegas. Mm -hmm. Like this is going to work in Vegas. Yeah. Look, is she playing the equivalent of you know Madison Square Garden there? No, she's playing like House of Blues, which is where like a lots of people perform. Yeah, it's a real thing. What do you think about the victims in the case with her ex husband? I guess he is now. Do you think they're going to have a problem with it? Um, I think a lot of people have a problem. I've already p done shows on. I'm betting on blonde and heading there, and people are like, "You are disgusting." Oh. Like you hate me for a lot of other reasons. Just hate me for this one too. Right. Well, why do they hate her for that? Do you think? Well, I think people feel that you know she should be giving money to the victims. That right. this windfall came to her through this man that stole from these victims and. She's living a life here. She's living a life. Well, what people also are not taking into consideration is here she is hustling to get a residency there. She's going to be making money there. She's working so she can get money. I mean, she needs money right now. She doesn't have a man supporting her. No, she doesn't have a man supporting her. Yeah, I mean, you listen, and then like legally her argument is always like, not that she has really addressed this a lot, but legally... I mean, I just spoke to her directly at Homeless Not Toothless, the event in Dorit's charity That's in really L.A. really the worst name. It's kind of funny, though, at this point. Okay. And by the way, um, you know, I mean, look, Erica is very – this is what I love about her, though. She's very business. She's never – like, she's just not – I love her. She's like, thank you for supporting. Great. Like, yeah. she. We had a few moments where she was like, you know, I'm not out of the woods yet, but mm. things are starting to turn. Like, I appreciate that. Give me a little nugget I can take back to Behind the Velvet Rope and the Rachel You Could Tell podcast. Mm -hmm. Misunderstood. But she's like, here's what she said. You talk about people that should be on your show. Like she said, like, look, when the world is crashing in, this is something you can relate to. When the world is crashing in against you, you have to protect yourself. A hundred percent. Period. And so I'm like, I get it. Like, mm -hmm. it takes a strong person to have to block out all of that and victims and like, you still have to get up and put food in your mouth and figure it out for yourself. Oh, everything. And legally, you know, there's always the argument of like, I can't be paying victims. Not that she even is entertained. It's not really her place. I don't have to entertain this. Yeah. Everyone says victims and this and that. But like, so I think two, th I always say on my podcast, two things get to be true. You could feel horrible for these people and you could say, I'm going on into Vegas to make money. Mm. The two things get to be true. But she, that is what she said to me directly face to face. Yeah. She's like, you know, when the world is crashing in, you have to, not everyone could survive that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel I could, like I can go through what you went through and I would be just fine. Yeah. And I don't know about when I was 23, but now I could. Yeah. I would be like, Erica, you just have to. You preserve yourself and then figure yep. out the rest later on. No, I agree. And I actually respect that she's hustling and doing something to get herself back up on that stage, so to speak, um, and, you know, do something to create her brand as opposed to being known for what people know her for now, you know? Yeah. Um, and she's, you know, trying to get away from just being known as a housewife, just being known as a rich man's wife that got in a lot of trouble. So I think it'll be an interesting path for her. And like at BravoCon, I wasn't there, but I you know I had someone on my podcast, like a, a friend of mine was like, you know, they were waiting at the barriers for like who came and went from the hotel. Because I said like, yeah. who was rude to you? And it was like, it's like a blogger who's way less advanced than mm -hmm. I am in the world. But that's not even, I'm not being obnoxious. <laughs> I'm just saying like, I was like, so tell me who do you, and you know, he said like Eric, and apparently so Eric, you know, they were stopping, you know, you, you know the barriers, mm -hmm. you take the selfies. Yeah. But he's like, Erica wouldn't even look, I'm like, I don't blame her. I mean, that's the thing. All these people that hate Erica so much, they still want a fucking picture. Yeah. They're still going to be nice to her when they see her at an airport face to face. He's like, she wouldn't even engage. I don't blame her. She's looking at all of you people saying like, you're the same people that want a picture with me or the same ones that crucify me, keyboard warriors. 
you have a problem. Now you want a picture with me? Yeah. I wouldn't give you a fucking picture either. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's the weird thing about our society. People can criticize you, but they want that picture. Right. Right. Okay, last question. You brought up to me the other day that Paris Hilton is going on tour. I didn't even know she was considered a singer. Okay, well, <clears throat> many years ago, I'll, I'll play it for you after, we had a classic CD by Paris Hilton. Stars, you know stars are, stars are blind. You know these songs. She covered Rod Stewart's Don't You Think I'm Sexy. She had yes, this okay. came out. Yes. And I still listen to it often. Then, yeah, she has a DJ Was it played career. on the radio? Y- yes. Wow. Stars Are Blind is like, if I played Stars Are Blind right now for you, you would be like, oh, my God. Right. I know it. Yeah, I'm really. sure I know it. I she was on it. the Channel 4 New Year's with Miley was hosting. Paris came out and they all did stuff. Like, it's a big song she doesn't she's not really known for her voice it's a great voice though is it i think so oh good i mean then again there's people that will just so she's not going don't you have to have a number of songs to go on a tour there's not a tour what's happening is in la on june 7th Mm -hmm. for her first live performance as a singer in pretty much i guess 10 15 years Mm -hmm. There's a one night only, but it's because she has new music. It's a showcase, Rachel. Okay. Oh. In the biz, we Are say you showcase. Go? Okay, well, let me explain a few things. <laughs> I, wh- like, I'm not not going to go, but I'm not going to go. Like, I like to, if there was a seat, I would go. It's general admission. So right now, right there, we start at a, mind you, Tom Sandoval was also general admission, but that's not going to, this is a big thing. Like, this sold out within minutes. Of course, you can still get a ticket somewhere, but- mm-hmm. And, you know, there's The Paris no, Hilton thing sold out. Within, like, it's a big, like, come on. Wow. Paris Hilton. The books, I, I, I went to the book signing. She just had her book signing in, like, a month and a half, two months Were ago. Were a lot of people there? Sold out within seconds. Honey, Paris is, like, she's, she's not- still got it. She's not Kim, but she's really an icon. I don't care if you love her or hate her. She's- and By the way, she's one of the most gorgeous women I've ever gorgeous. seen. Yeah. Gorgeous. I don't think people give her a lot of credit for that. She's beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah wonderful so no this shit sold out right away i mean i have my place in la like i was like ah but you know and i'm like general admission there's no like you know they arrange for me to go with tom sandoval and say hi there's that's not going to happen with paris hilton so i'm not i can go to a regular if there was a seat i would just go Mm -hmm. and i'm like too old for general admission, honey. Yeah, I it's, get it's it. like so and like really Blow what's you r- at this well point. it's not but like I'm like what's the point of like standing all the way in back? Like mm-hmm. I wanna be up front. I'd rather just pay a certain amount and get a front row seat and show up three minutes before it starts. Yeah. So there's a lot of factors here that are that but I, I wanted to go until I looked into the actual details. But if there's new music and I'm hoping there's gonna be a tour after this, I think that's the point of this is to like showcase this song was big, this song was not. Yeah. We have to work out the kinks. There's I'm marking my work there's going to be a tour with a meet and greet and all that okay and i that i will go to this is this is major okay what is the one show you're looking forward to that's coming out soon i am going to like four madonnas what i have tickets to like four la and new york oh you didn't know this no Oh, I'm going with Patty Stanger to one of them. Okay. When they went on sale, Patty's like this and that and just Does get she them from play there. her old stuff? Now she is. Okay, this is good. do you realize that this is the year? Nineteen eighty three mm-hmm. is when the so this is truly the fortieth the fortieth anniversary like this year. That so music is, is still iconic. Everywhere I go, even if I go into like a bodega, they're playing Madonna. The old stuff. Everywhere. Yeah. This time it's all oldies. So we're predicting Madonna's comeback. I think people have given her a hard time recently because of her face, because of the people she dates. I don't know. They're giving her a hard time now with saying like they saw like a performance, like footage is leaked. and There's very mixed – I mean comeback I think is a – I don't know if there is really a comeback. Like with the kids. The kids are like, who is this? Really? Right. It's a little crazy. Yeah. But it really diehards. shows our age because she I was can't. the thing. Back I can't. Then. It, it was her, Whitney Houston, and Wham, and Prince. Oh yeah, Prince. Sure. I was just at the time and Michael Sandoval. Jackson and Michael Jackson at the Tom Sandoval concert. Live Nation was outside, and they were like, "Who has been your best concert ever, Prince?" I've seen Prince many times. Yeah. I mean, that's really. Mm-hmm. A big thing. I know. I mean, it, so I don't know about a comeback, but, you know, she still sells out and the people that 
appreciate are going to go insane for yeah. this show. Okay. Insane. Well, you'll have to come back on to four. And, and tell me what that's like. I'm going to the Taylor Swift concert with my daughter to celebrate her 11th birthday and Mother's Day. So this will be a very interesting thing. I hate concerts. Really? Yeah. I love, I, I love, I mean, first of all, you're way more of the youth than I am because Taylor <laughs> Swift is way more, even that's not exactly current, current, but that's yeah. way more of the current world than Madonna. At least yeah. the kids know who she is. Oh, of course. And what's interesting. You hate concerts? I don't like going to concerts. It's too loud. You know, y- your seat isn't necessarily great no matter where you But if you, you know sit. the music. If you know the music, like I would go to a Britney Spears concert immediately do you know what i'm also going to this is really gonna show my age and not in new york i i don't even know where i think ohio and somewhere else because that's where the front row seats were duran duran oh i've been to their concert they're phenomenal right that's what i'm saying they are so good and i I know every song right yeah i go to let me put it this way i used to go to a million concerts now i'm very selective because i just like i'm like yeah i've been to everything and like Mm. i'm over it but Duran, I literally went when the tickets were on sale. I was like, I don't care where it is. I just need to secure the front or second row. Yeah. And then when I did, when all the dust settled, because once it goes on the third party market, you're like, fuck. I mean, it's expensive to begin with. I think yeah. I'm going to like Ohio and like Detroit. I'm oh, being, wow. I, I was like, so I don't you're care. You're traveling for it. Duran is like major. Yeah. Major. I would do that for Hall and Oates. I've seen them phenomenal. They're so good. The thing is, you know every song. Yeah. Well, next I, time Hall and Oates comes, we'll go. Do you go. think they're ever going to go on tour again? They were, like, they just played, I think, like a year ago. Oh, not well, even so. I'm going to go and look because them I'll go to go phenomenal. You yeah. say, have you've seen them, right? No, I've never seen. Oh them. my god! When I worked at Tau, amazing. Um, D- who's the tall blonde? Daryl. Daryl Hall. I always get them confused. Um, came in, and I just no one know who. Did knew you want to marry was. him? Yeah, right, isn't he I, gay? I, no, he's straight. Is he? I think he's married. Oh, gosh. Well, anyways, the bottom line is he came into the club. No one in the front knew who he was. I had to jump over the stanchions and security guards and be like, no, 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 because they turned him away. And I was like, he can come in. Of course he can come in. What do you mean? So that would be a concert I'd love to Isn't this sad? The 80s legends are turned away. Yeah, it's just – it's so sad. They must all be alcoholics and in some sort of therapy now for that. Because I have a bunch of 80s legends coming up. And I can tell you, my my listeners who hang on every word I say when I have a Bravo person on, no one. These are not going to be my most heavily downloaded episodes. Yeah. But I'm gonna. It's already. They're already. They're, I'm like, this is a self indulgent episode. I've already recorded them. Right. Right. Lots of people. Well, thank you so much for coming on and, and discussing way, all of your gossip. Yeah. Before we leave, the next time I come on, and mm. do not talk about this topic until I'm back. Okay. I want to know. Who you want, who you want out there, who we're going to fix you up with. Because okay. we're, we're going to do a whole Rachel, like, famous people dating episode. Yeah, I think okay. that would be really fun. And we'll do some hot topics, too. Okay. All right. So and that's... everyone could follow me and listen to Behind the start. Velvet. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. God, Wait, I'm... let's start over. David, where could people find you? Oh, my God. Thank you for asking. <laughs> they Listen, it's called Behind the Velvet Rope. You know, it's Apple, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. I always tell people, if you hated everything I said here today and I annoyed you, you should still tune in because I do celebrity interviews and it's not about me. I don't talk. It's all about the questions and getting info out of other people. But listen to Behind the Velvet Rope and follow me on Instagram, Behind Velvet Rope. Yes. Know the It's a great podcast. You will love it. And he has fantastic guests. They're always very interesting. And celeb gossip, girl. And the gossip. All right. Thanks, honey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to Misunderstood. I'm your host, Rachel Yucatel. Please be sure to subscribe to the show and give us a five-star rating and review. You can support the show by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash misunderstood with Rachel Yucatel. Do you have ideas for the show or want to reach out? Email us at info misunderstood podcast at gmail.com. That's spelled M-I-S-S understood. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Misunderstood.